vanuit Arizona is het nu verder westwaarts richting Californië, de grootste buit bij de presidentsverkiezingen. Dukakis ligt ook hierachter, maar hij mag deze staat niet verliezen. En het punt in zijn voordeel is een milieuprogramma. De milieubeweging in Californië is sterk en steunt Dukakis. Hier in de woestijn belanden we in een klassiek dilemma dat ook onder de oppervlakte van de verkiezingscampagne schuilt. Individuele vrijheid versus het algemeen belang. And I'm afraid that Bush don't have the, uh, I just don't think he's got it up here to be a president. That's my opinion. I don't think he's, I don't think he's got it. All right. I just don't think he's got it. So I don't like I'm against both of them. Generally, I'm only against one, so I go vote, but this time I'm against both of them, so I think it's going to bother the vote, you know. <laughs> Joe houdt van zijn vrijheid en is ver van de mensen af gaan wonen in de Mojave woestijn. Hij bewaakt een mijn van een bevriende fortuinzoeker. Anno 1988 zijn er 10.000 claims geregistreerd van particulieren die op de gok een mijntje mogen beginnen in deze woestijn. Als de ene plek niks oplevert, haalt men daarna elders de grond overhoop. De laatste grote vondst dateert van 1949. De zandduinen zijn uniek, maar Joe en zijn vrienden zijn dat ook. Nazaten van de koppige eenlingen uit het oude Wilde Westen. De lone riders die het Amerikaanse landschap hebben gevuld met mythologie. De milieubeschermers krijgen steun van Michael Dukakis. Ze willen van de woestijn een beschermd staatspark maken. En in een staatspark is geen plaats voor Joe. Are you uh, for it or against it that the Mojave Desert becomes a park? Naturally, I'm against it. <laughs> I'd like to stay out here, you know. Not here particularly, but yeah. it. Uh, the miners, uh, the old-time miners, are not hurting this country. You don't see any harm in uh, exploiting the the dunes here, the sand dunes. I see absolutely none. Every time the wind blows, it changes. They shift. Every every time you get a 30, 40 mile an hour wind here, them sand dunes shift. They obliterate everything. 100 mijl verderop in Las Vegas heeft de traditionele Amerikaanse gelukszoekerij de vorm aangenomen van massaconsumptie. Niet veel rijker lieten we de woestijn achter ons. Een milieukwestie van groter politiek belang trok ons naar de kust bij Los Angeles, waar het particulier initiatief en de gemeenschapszin weer eens niet met elkaar stroken. Ah, another typical day in California. Oil drilling is usually safe, but accidents do happen. Controller Gray Davis against Occidental Petroleum's oil drilling scheme. Occidental wants to drill 60 oil wells here next to an earthquake fault. Last month, oil pipelines in the San Fernando Valley erupted twice. And in August, an oil rig exploded just up the coast. 
Thousands of kids use this beach. We can't afford to have an accident. Op 8 november stemt men in Californië niet alleen op de presidentskandidaat, maar ook voor of tegen tientallen lokale wetsvoorstellen. Oliemaatschappijen willen meer boortorens voor de kust neerzetten. Lokale politici verzetten zich en krijgen steun van Dukakis die daarmee op zijn beurt aan populariteit won. Bush, die ooit zelf een oliemaatschappij had, ging in de aanval. Hij liet een commercial maken over de vervuilde haven van Boston. Dukakis wordt in die commercial verantwoordelijk gesteld voor de vervuiling. In werkelijkheid is de gouverneur van Massachusetts gedwarsboomd door de regering Reagan-Bush bij pogingen de boel op te ruimen. Maar de negatieve reclame werkte en Dukakis sloeg te laat terug. Twice supported the veto of the Clean Water Act and opposed a ban on ocean dumping. And now suddenly George Bush tells you he's going to be the environmentalist president. Do you believe that? The League of Conservation Voters doesn't either. They gave George Bush a D rating and they endorsed Michael Dukakis for president. Because the best America is yet to come. Dukakis in de verdediging, dat is het beeld. In Californië kostte dat stemmen. Op een receptie van de Democratische Partij van Santa Barbara schoot men nu samen vanwege de lokale kandidaat voor het Huis van Afgevaardigden, Gary Hart, die ook op 8 november moet worden gekozen, ook door de Milieubeweging wordt gesteund en zelfs de vakbond heeft hier het glas op minder banen in de olie. John Kennedy ended up winning the presidency by one vote per precinct nationwide. And uh, we had an election in Lompoc last year for mayor that was decided by three votes in a town of uh, 30,000. And uh, I think this possibly may be uh, that close an election. So I hope all of you will. Hart's campagne is gecombineerd met die van Dukakis in deze regio en hij probeert de milieuzorg weer uit de smoezelige handen van de Bush-advertentiemannen te trekken. Oh my goodness, there are so many different things that thread the environment. I think in this particular area concerns uh, focus around offshore oil development. Uh, we have some of the loveliest coastline here in California and we've had some difficult situations in recent years and uh, many people are concerned that we're going to be overwhelmed with the industrialization of our coastline with increased oil development. And under every beach in Los Angeles, the sponsors of Prop O call themselves no oil. But what they really mean is no oil in their exclusive neighborhood, not yours. As I see it, these people who are abusing our public lands can either clean up their act or get out of town. Bad guys abuse public land. Good guys save it. It's part of a four and a half million dollar effort by the Dukakis campaign to try and close the gap. Celebrities like Lloyd Bridges right and his son now, Jeff helped out at the Santa Monica rally. Organizers said the sometime voter is not showing up in the current polls. En op die ongemotiveerde stemmer laten de presidentskandidaten in deze laatste dagen voor de verkiezingen legers vrijwilligers los. Voor Dukakis een halszaak. Californië moet worden gewonnen. Excuse me, are you volunteers? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, what are you going to do? Deliver signs and We're delivering signs literature. And looking up their locations on the map. <laughs> uh, We've done precinct work and given a lot of money and phone calls. <laughs> now, uh, Michael Dukakis um, is strong on environment. Is that an issue that interests you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what are the dangers at the moment environmentally here in uh, California? 
on yeah, the whole the, coastline. Yeah, you know, the oil. And the toxic and waste. Pollution, that sort of thing. Our it, water is a, a problem. They've color-coded these, uh, pink being real loyal Democratic precincts. I know that much, but I'm not yeah. sure about the others. Okay. So. Who doesn't have a script? Oh, for those of you who are going to be calling, this is the same thing you're to do when you knock on somebody's door, and I'll just go over it. Hello, is Ike Martinez there? My name is Beth Sheehan, and I live, and for those of you who live in the neighborhood, tell them what street you live on. I live on Chapala Street, or I live on State Street. Um, and I'm volunteering here in Santa Barbara for Gary Hart, the Democrat who's running for Congress, and Michael Dukakis. Can we count on your support this November? That's the first thing you want to find out. If yes, terrific. The race is really close. Every vote's going to make a difference. And you could really help in your neighborhood by putting up a lawn sign. And we'll deliver it to you. Um, I don't know what number are we talking about. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. We, we live in this building, and we're working with the Dukakis campaign, and we're just interested in finding out how no, you're planning I'm on voting. I'm not for the conference. Pardon me? Not for me. You're not voting for Dukakis? No. OK, thank you very much. Well, she has a friendly dog. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, we're working with the Democratic Party. We're just trying Not to find out. Not for your Not for your caucus? Okay. Are you planning on voting for Gary yeah. Hart? Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Wasn't George Bush right when he said that the opposition is over there in left field, they're out of the mainstream of American politics, and their policies can only be described by the dreaded L word, liberal, liberal, liberal. Dukakis besteedt een groot deel van zijn campagne aan de verdediging tegen de aantijging dat hij een linkse radicaal is, een belastingverkwister, een lafhartige liberal, een bijna on-Amerikaanse goddeloze subversief. En nu is er een controverse ontstaan rond de meest effectieve, leugenachtige tv-commercial... ...waarmee het het Bush-team gelukt is om Dukakis af te schilderen als een liberal... ...die meer hart heeft voor misdadigers dan voor hun slachtoffers. Als governor Michael Dukakis vetoed mandatory sentences voor drug dealers. Hij vetoed de death penalty. His revolving door prison policy gave weekend furloughs to first-degree murderers not eligible for parole. While out, many committed other crimes like kidnapping and rape, and many are still at large. Now Michael Dukakis says he wants to do for America what he's done for Massachusetts. America can't afford that risk. George Bush talks a lot about prison furloughs, but he won't tell you that the Massachusetts program was started by a Republican and stopped by Mike Dukakis. And Bush won't talk about the thousands of drug kingpins furloughed from federal prisons while he led the war on drugs. Bush won't talk about this drug pusher, one of his furloughed heroin dealers, who raped and murdered Patsy Pedrin, pregnant mother of two. The real story about furloughs is that George Bush has taken a furlough from the truth. He's running a campaign based on distortions and distractions and outright lies. Dukakis does not himself accuse the Bush campaign of racism, but others, citing its concentration on furloughed black murderer Willie Horton, do. And are you sick and tired of the Bush quail dirty trick team holding up the image of Willie Horton in a blatant appeal to fear and racism? I don't know how many of you have got this. Friends, this is garbage. In the Midwest's most pivotal battleground, Republicans have launched a direct mail campaign, painting Governor Dukakis as the candidate for murderers, rapists, drug pushers, and child molesters in Massachusetts. How do you define the word liberal? What is a liberal in 1988? That's maybe a question that we ought to ask George Bush if he had been here. No, no, I'd like, to hear, I'd like to hear what your definition is. Well, I think all of us have uh, combinations of liberal and conservative about us, uh, Ted. I'm not Governor, liberal. forgive me, that's been your answer now for three months. Yeah, but I'd like to hear what you define, what is a liberal? Well, if, if one is a liberal in the tradition of Franklin Roosevelt and Harry Truman and John Kennedy, and I'm 1988, that, Governor. Uh, one is somebody who cares deeply about people, sees concerns, sees opportunities to uh, make a real difference in the lives of real people, and works hard in public service to help make that difference in a way that 
will improve the quality of life of all of our people. But uh, like most people, I have uh, certain conservative instincts as well. Uh, I've done some things that I guess you'd call conservative, but I'm also proud of the fact that uh, we've done some things that uh, I think you'd call liberal in the best sense of the word. Now, I think what's going on here is that Mr. Bush is trying to misuse that label in a way which uh, suggests that uh, I'm somebody who, who doesn't have a set of values that's kind of permissive, that uh, uh, is willing to let murderers out of jail all the time. And you got it. That's, really care. that's the suggestion. I think that's a bad misuse of it. I, There's a piece of video that I'd like you to take a look at. Right. You've seen it before. Um, in, in, in one sense, with all due respect, let me suggest to you, I still don't think you get it. They have labeled you, they, the Republicans in this yeah. case, as a liberal, which has a meaning to people. May not be the meaning that right. exists in your head, it has this kind of meaning. Mike Dukakis and Willie Horton changed our lives forever. He was serving a life term without the possibility of a parole when Governor Dukakis gave him a few days off. Horton broke into our home. For 12 hours I was beaten, slashed, and terrorized. My wife Angie was brutally raped. When his liberal experiment failed, Dukakis simply looked away. He also vetoed the death penalty bill. Regardless of the election, we worried that people don't know enough about Mike Dukakis. Gevangenverlof als liberal experiment. Onzin. In een advertentie in de New York Times verdedigen liberals zich tegen het misbruik van die term liberal door president Reagan. Hij steekt de draak met het gevreesde L-woord. Wij maken ons zorg om de vernedering van Amerikaanse waarden. Liberale principes als vrijheid, tolerantie en de bescherming van de rechten van de burger. Ondertekend John Kenneth Galbraith, Arthur Schlesinger, William Sean, Robert Silvers, William Styron. Well, I think they see, what they see is first of all a candidate, Dukakis, who is in a way the absolute distillation of what a liberal democrat should be. He's in the ACLU, he went to a liberal college, he was a pro somewhat little progressive governor of Massachusetts. Here is a man who should be their standard bearer. Mm -hmm. And he's failed completely. He is unable to say the word liberal. Mm -hmm. So they correctly perceive that, in a way, they're stock in trade, which is you know, a reaffirmation of principle. Mm -hmm. And they can see, in a way, that the Bush people can say, where is our opposition? It doesn't exist. How could, after watching Dukakis in the last three weeks, how could anybody support him? Well, after all, Dukakis is for a lot of things that liberals and left-wing people in America are for, uh, like health insurance, civil rights, no to the Contras, no to Savimbi in uh, Angola, more attention for the environment, afford affordable housing, higher minimum wage, no tax credits for the rich. I just plucked from his speeches, you know, you know daycare plans, uh, the woman's right to, uh, uh, to decide on abortion, gun control, all things that... Uh, but he's unable to articulate uh, the philosophy that undermine, underlie these positions. You know, it's like in Shakespeare and Julius Caesar, you know, the man says plucking, you know, I could find it when he, the soothsayer, and he puts his hand into the animal to bring out the entrails so he could read the future in, in the play. He says, pluck, I could find no heart within the beast. Where's the heart? There's no heart. He has no idea. The Republicans are right. Dukakis said, this election is not about ideology, it's about competence. The Republicans listened to that and they said the one thing Americans do actually in a curious way understand is ideology. They don't really give a damn about competence. You know, competence. You know. What is, is that? Competence? So, yeah? yeah, people respect ideology. They respect, funda they respect a position, like the fundamentalists, you know. It's a position, right? Mm -hmm. They respect people who really say what they think. The one thing people don't like is some flim-flam guy who says, when you say, are you a liberal? And you say, well, I don't know. I mean, it's like, it's like Superman when he's dropped his krypton. You know, you, I mean, he doesn't know where he's at. People look at that and they say, this is a schmuck. In the discussion with uh, Ted Koppel, Koppel asked Dukakis to define the term liberal. What should he have answered? He should have said, Ted, I'm glad you asked that question. If you're talking about fundamental American values of decency, of standing up for the oppressed, of looking after minorities whom this administration has brutalized. You, know, you can tell the speech. Of course I'm a liberal. If you're meaning some kind of preposterous joke invented by my, op my opponent, then I'm not a liberal. But he, so great is the sort of mauvaise foi within his bosom that he can't say these words. The ads of George Bush have been uh, specifically effective 
and, and I think of the ad in which he condemns the furlough program of uh, Massachusetts. How do you view that? Well, you mean this, uh, the furlough program of Massachusetts, which freed this guy, uh, well, Willie, a lot Willie of people, Horton. including Willie Horton, who has the advantage from the Republican point of view of being a black guy who went and raped some poor woman in uh, Maryland. Dukakis was, again, very stupid. They could have immediately struck back. They could have said, you know, of course furlough is... It's a question always of having the strength of your own convictions. The minute you're on the defensive, the enemy will advance. What should he have said? He should have said, it was a terrible thing that happened. It was awful. Every night when I go to bed, I see the suffering of that woman in Maryland. It will be, stay with me till the day I die. But I run one of the best in prison programs in the United States. In the end, criminals don't die in jail. You don't wait till they're 180. You have to release them. Is it right that they should be thrown immediately into the community, or should we try and release them? This is true of every state in the United States. There is nothing different here. There is nothing to be ashamed of, although the sufferings of these people. But Dukakis was arrogant. You know, when this first came up, he didn't make the elementary effort at human understanding. The guy is, he's like a brick. You know, when, when the guy on the, one of these interviews, he said, what would happen if your wife was raped? You know, what would you feel? Now, every person feels, what would you say? I personally, you're asking me, if my wife was raped, what would I want to do to the guy? I want to take an axe and chop his head off. Then I want to throw his body into a vat of boiling oil and throw it to the crocodiles. But do we run our society on the principles of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth? No. We have principles of justice, of fair play, of detachment. That's why we have courts. It's so easy. You could say it. I could say it. He couldn't say that. I was, I was earlier today with some guy, you know, uh, I was talking to a black fellow at some, some place, and he was saying, why couldn't he say this? Why couldn't he exhibit to people an elementary understanding of emotion? Why? I think because he's an incredibly repressed guy, enormously repressed. You know, uh, when you look at his history of his family, you know, it's all this self-help, Greek, second generation, Greek immigrant, go to school, work hard, take an exam, work more, read books, never, you know, uh, look at people and try and be an ordinary person. Jimmy Carter at least could do that. Mm -hmm. George Bush, who's one of the most uptight people who ever got out of a motor car, he can learn to do it. But Dukakis can't. It isn't easy for the truth to catch up with the lies and to clear up the fog of deception that has been spread across the campaign. But I'm determined to fight this fight. Because the question before us is the strength and the character of our country. I'm not content to see America stand still, because all around us the world is moving, and the years ahead will decide whether we as a people move ahead or fall behind. Dukakis' strategie, mikken op het terugwinnen van democraten die op Reagan stemden, is door Bush de grond ingeboerd. En intussen heeft hij met zijn lonken naar die vage groep stemmen verspeeld bij de liberals, bij links en bij zwart Amerika. Hij zou zich sterk maken voor een aantal goede zaken, maar naar het zich laat aanzien moet hij die zaken nog op zijn minst vier jaar wachten op een pleitbezorger in het Witte Huis. The whole thing is, in this country it takes great jobs of money to get somebody elected. Great jobs of it. The TV don't come cheap. And that's what they get, that's what most of the voters get informed by, is that TV.